Unit 7 is going to focus on ecology, and ecology is the study of how the living and non-living systems in an ecosystem interact. The first topic we'll touch on in this unit is marine primary productivity. Now, what is primary production? Well, it is the production of chemical energy in organic compounds by living organisms. Or, in simple terms, it's the production of food by living organisms. Primary producers are autotrophic organisms that carry out primary production, usually by means of photosynthesis and also chemosynthesis. Probably the most familiar primary producer to you would be a plant. They use photosynthesis to make sugar. Well, the number one producer in the ocean would actually be phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are microscopic autotrophs typically members of the kingdom Protista, that are responsible for most of the primary production in the ocean. You can see some examples of these phytoplankton below. Examples include diatoms and also dinoflagellates. Now, how is primary productivity done? Well, primarily through the process of photosynthesis, but also through a process called chemosynthesis. You may recall from biology that photosynthesis is where plants and other autotrophs take in carbon dioxide and water and use light energy to synthesize sugars or other carbohydrates. And of course, another byproduct of that is oxygen. Now in chemosynthesis, autotrophs will take in carbon dioxide again because they need that carbon source. But they also will take in oxygen and then the chemical hydrogen sulfide. And they split that chemical hydrogen sulfide to liberate energy, which they put into the carbon to make a carbohydrate. The byproduct, of course, of that would have to be sulfur, but they also give off water. Chemosynthesis ordinarily happens in the ocean depths near hydrothermal vents. Now, there's two forms of primary production to talk about. There's gross primary production, which is the total amount of organic material produced through photosynthesis. But then there's also net primary productivity, which is the gain in organic matter, or food, um, after the phytoplankton consume the sugars that they need to survive through respiration. If we were to simplify this with an equation, net primary productivity would equal gross primary productivity minus the respiration of autotrophs. A simple analogy for this would be your paycheck. If you've ever seen your paycheck, you have a gross pay, which is the total amount of money you've worked for the, or earned for the hours that you've worked. But then you also have a net pay, which is the amount of money that you actually pocket after the government removes taxes and also Social Security. Now let's focus on the productivity in the ocean itself. Current estimates are that the ocean's average primary productivity ranges from 75 to 150 grams of carbon produced per meter squared per year. Now keep in mind that each uh, that the ocean is several million square meters big. That is a lot of carbon produced on the ocean surface each year. Another term we need to, to learn here is biomass. Biomass is the mass of living tissue in an area. Now standing crop is another term that refers to the biomass at a given time. The standing crop in the oceans is only about 1 to 2 billion metric tons. Now, that may seem like a lot, but when we compare that to land, land, the photosynthetic standing crop, is 600 to 1,000 billion metric tons. In other words, it can be as much as 1 trillion metric tons of, of plant material to do photosynthesis. With that, you might conclude that the land must have a higher average productivity uh, each year. But there's something else to factor in here, and that is turnover. Turnover is the rate of the photosynthesis respiration cycle. And marine turnover is much shorter than on land. So this shorter turnover time means that the standing crop passes energy through the ecosystem faster. So if we take all this together and we sum it up, this means that even, the ocean, even though the ocean has less photosynthetic biomass than land, it has a faster turnover rate. And this means that the ocean has a higher productivity than the land. So in short, the ocean produces much more food than what is produced on land. 
So we just learned that the ocean produces a lot of food in a given year. However, there are some things that limit productivity in the ocean. And let's see what those things are. There are two major limiting factors, and that is light and nutrients. Let's focus on light. In general, in general, the greater the light intensity of the sun yields a higher productivity in an area. Now, there is a circumstance where you can have too much light, and that's what we call photo inhibition. So you can actually overstimulate the chlorophyll molecules in plant cells so that they actually can't produce that much sugar. The diagram or graph you see in this slide shows the surface of the ocean at the top and then it gets deeper as you go down. Now the graph shows the amount of productivity. The gross productivity you notice is the entire curve that you see that's both dark blue and green together. The net productivity, which is of course the amount of food produced after the autotrophs eat themselves, is green. Notice at the very surface of the ocean, photosynthesis is inhibited because of that photo inhibition, and there's actually less productivity. The greatest amount of productivity occurs at about 25 meters deep in the ocean on average. Now notice something occurs below 50 meters in the ocean, and this is called the compensation depth. This is the depth at which the light intensity is lower, which causes the photosynthetic rate to equal the respiration rate. As a result, the net primary productivity is equal to zero. As I mentioned, nutrients are also a major limiting factor. In general, the more nutrients you have in an area will yield a higher productivity. However, you can have excessive nutrients from things like nutrient pollution that can limit productivity because they cause hypoxia or anoxia, which if you remember is low oxygen level. So what we just learned means that there's going to be areas in the ocean that are more productive than other areas due to the amount of light and nutrients they receive. In the poles, there's extremely high primary productivity in the summer because there's more sunlight during the summer. And also it gets a little bit warmer so the ice caps melt and those release nutrients. So if you look at that top graph there, you notice that in the summertime in the poles, phytoplankton biomass is huge and following that phytoplankton uh, mass is a bunch of zooplankton biomass that increases and this attracts whales and other marine mammals to this area that feed on this abundance of zooplankton so during the summer the baleen whales always migrate up to the poles uh, where there's plenty of food for them to eat now in the tropics it's a different circumstance there's plenty of sunlight but actually there's very little nutrients and the consequence of that is you see there's very low phytoplankton and zooplankton biomass in the ocean. This explains why the tropical waters are so clear and blue because there's just simply not many nutrients in the water and as a result you can't have too many plankton that would turn the water green. But there is a, a, a stimulation in the biomass during the summer but again it's not a very large uh, uh, high productivity in the tropics. Now in the temperate regions, also called the seasonal seas, these have high productivity in the spring and late summer caused by sufficient light and nutrients. In the temperate regions during the spring when light is increasing, you have a bloom in phytoplankton and then following that is a huge bloom in, in the zooplankton biomass following that in the summer. Now there are two particular areas in the ocean that have extremely high productivity and that would be coastal waters. They have a high productivity because of increased nutrients from river runoff. So if you look at the map on this slide you'll see that there is high productivity in nearly all the coastal areas of the continents. Also upwelling zones have the highest productivity. If you remember, upwelling currents are currents that bring up nutrient-rich water from the deep ocean. So because of this nutrient-rich water coming to the surface, the productivity is extremely high. And in the map, these areas are denoted with purple, the purple regions um, that have very high productivity. 
you notice off the coast of California, off the coast of South America, in particular near Peru, and also South Africa. Now you'll notice the open ocean has relatively low productivity uh, because of low nutrient levels. And this is simply because there's no rivers running into this part of the ocean and no upwelling uh, to bring nutrients from the depth.